Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Conversations About Priesthood. Uh, my name is V and I am really, really looking forward to today's conversation, which will be with the Right Reverend Dr. Caraway Dogu, who is the Bishop of Woolwich. Welcome, Bishop. Thank you very much, Wonderful. Vanessa, my dear sister. It's a joy and a privilege to be with you. Wonderful. Um, Bishop, I just want to start off by saying a massive thank you for accepting to have this conversation with me. I'm really looking forward to learning from you and hearing a bit um, from your wisdom as well. Um, so before we kickstart the conversation and talk about priesthood, um, I wondered whether you could just, if you would like to just very briefly um, just introduce yourself and maybe share a bit about the context that you're currently based in. Okay, my name is um, Right Reverend Dr. Caraway Dogu. I am the current Bishop of Woolwich. Before that, I was the prebendary at St. Paul's Cathedral and the parish priest of St. John the Evangelist for a number of years. Before that, I served my title, my title at St. Mark's, Tollington Park. Before that, I trained at Oak Hill Theological College wow. in Southgate. Before that, I did a master's in missiology um, at All Nations Bible College in Wet. And before that, I did a bachelor's degree, an honors bachelor's degree in theology at London School of Theology. It used to be called the London Bible College. Before that, I was a practicing missionary doctor and general practitioner in Nigeria. I studied medicine and surgery and qualified and practiced for a number of years before I responded to the call of God to serve him in missions. Mm -hmm. And um, where I am today is in, I'm in Sodok Diocese, south of the river, as Bishop of Woolwich, with responsibility for the whole of South London, from London Bridge to Thamesmead, and as far as Welling in um, South Kent, just East London, yeah. So I have responsibility for about 100 parishes, and it's an exciting place to be, because Sodok has been described as the most representative of the Anglican communion, mm, mm. because it has representatives from all over the Anglican communion in, that, in this diocese. And so the diocese extends as far as Gatwick Airport. So we serve the whole of South London, East Surrey, and parts of Sussex. We serve a population of 2.6 million people. Wow. So Sodok is a huge diocese. And our Lord Bishop Christopher Chesson is our diocesan bishop. Mm -hmm. I am one of the area bishops in charge of the area called Woolwich. There's another area bishop in charge of the area called Croydon. And there's a third area called Kingston. So we have three episcopal areas in Southwark and one diocesan bishop. So in our college of bishops, we have four bishops. Mm -hmm. So this is my context. I work in a multi multicultural multi-faith, multi-religious, multi-ethnic, name it. <laughs> We've got it here in Sodok. And you may have heard recently that Sodok has just led the way mm. by appointing the first female black bishop mm. in the diocese. And she is in person of a delightful colleague, the Venerable Dr. Rosemary Mallet. Mm. So ah. this is my, it's very exciting to be here. Wonderful. Oh, gosh, you've got a lot of experience under your belt, Bishop. Um, and hearing about the context that you're based in, it all sounds really exciting. Sounds like you're a very busy individual. <laughs> oh, yes, very busy. I mean, every day is different. And as, as you know, we learn every day. And I'm delighted to be with you, Vanessa, this morning, because I'm, I'm learning a lot from you, just being with you and hearing your story as well, because I think you're extremely creative. If only anybody had done this for me when I was going through the process myself, it would have been a delight to see this sort of video on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So I'm delighted to you'll be given the privilege to take part in this. Mm -hmm. So thank you for being very creative. And I will answer your questions as much as I can. But you know, <laughs> God is the treasure of all knowledge. That's right. We, are all, we all know in part and we learn in part. That's right. And we can only answer in part. That's right. Oh, thank you so much. Well, I'm going to delve straight into it and I'm going to begin with start with the first question. First question is, um, Bishop, what, what is your understanding of priesthood? Thank you so much. That's a very, very important question. 
And that's the question I have to tackle with all of my candidates as they prepare to go to the Bishop's Advisory Panel. Mm. And um, one of the interesting things I've found in my ministry is that the understanding of the priesthood has been seen to be different in different contexts. Mm. In our context in the Church of England, we have a very broad and wide ranging understanding of the ministry of the priesthood. Because as you know, we're a broad church. Mm. We go from, you talk about the Anglo-Catholic tradition and the evangelical tradition and the liberal Catholic tradition and the broad tradition. So we have a tradition that encompasses so many even Christian, Christian persuasions. Mm. And in that context, our understanding of the priesthood is very broad. Mm. And it will depend on who you're speaking to. Yes. But I'm going to try and summarize for you what I think the overall understanding is. First and foremost, the word priesthood comes from the Old Testament. Mm. And the first family of priests was the family of Aaron, mm. the brother of Moses, who was anointed to be the priest to the people. And he and his family, his sons, were anointed alongside him. And that gave rise to the Levitical family. And the Levitical family of priests were one family, one tribe in the nation of Israel that didn't have farms to farm. Because you know, the nation of Israel was an agrarian community. They fed on the, they, they walked on the land and they fed from it. Yeah. So the Levitical priests ministered to the Lord and to the people at the temple. And that was how, that was what gave rise to the origin of tithes. Mm. So the people gave a tithe of their offerings in kind and cash to the temple so that the priesthood could be sustained and maintained. Mm. Now move 100, 2000 years later to the New Testament, we have a different understanding of the priesthood in which the scripture talks about the universal priesthood of all believers, where the apostle Peter writes to the church in the diaspora and describes them as a holy nation, mm. a peculiar people, praise called to be priests and kings. And within that context, you see there's an evangelical understanding that we're all priests mm. in the church. So why should why are some people called to be priests when we are all priests? Obviously, not everybody would have the means and way of ministering in the church. Mm. in the office of a deacon or a priest or a bishop, mm. as we understand it in the Church of England. Because as you know, in the Church of England, we believe in the threefold ministry of deacon, priest, and bishop. And the deacon is one who is ordained to serve the church and the people mm. and to assist the local priests that they're working with. And the priest is called to serve God, first and foremost, as a vicar in the context of the word representation, representative, representing God to the people and the people to God. Mm. Why is that necessary? As I said earlier on, not everybody would have the means and the know-how to stand in that gap. So within the context of the fact that we're all called to be universal priests in every sense of the word, some are called within that to occupy the role of the priest in real time, in real energy, in real context, dealing with human situations as it affects the church and the body of Christ. Yeah. And what is the ministry of a priest? I believe that a priest is called first and foremost to be a person whose heart is after God. Yeah. A man of God. We say that a woman of God. By that we mean a person whose heart is after God. A person whose heart and be all is about God. And that from that perspective, God issues out of them the gifts and the many callings that he has upon their lives. Because that has to be the starting point. Yes. Because nobody can perform the office of a priest in their own strength. We even say this in the liturgy of the ordination of deacons, priests, and bishops. Mm. No one can perform this ministry in their own strength. So they have to depend on the power of Christ, 
of God the Father and the Holy Spirit, the triune God. Now, within that context, this man of God, a woman of God, has to be someone who spends time with God in prayer. Mm. So the priest has to be a person of prayer. A person of prayer, not prayer in the sense of bringing my shopping list before God, but prayer in terms of having an intimate walk with God. And we look from Old Testament to New Testament. We look at the example of Christ. He always took time out at the start of the day to go to a quiet place to talk with the Father. And then he will come out and say, oh, I can only do the things I see the Father doing. Why was he able to say that? Because he was in fellowship with the father. He showed us the example of prayer. Mm -hmm. He said to his disciples on the Mount of Transfiguration, are you not able to pray with me? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, guys. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Because he went ahead to pray, came back and found them sleeping. He went and came back, they were still sleeping. Mm -hmm. And as Jesus spent time in prayer, he was able to do things that were humanly unseen mm. and you remember he taught his disciples to pray mm. and he said in luke's gospel men ought to pray always and not faint yes. so the priest has to be a man or woman whose heart is after god that's the starting point secondly a person of prayer building an intimate friendship with god 24 7 making time to go away and pray on the mountain, making time to fast and pray, making time to set themselves apart, starting the day, the begin, at the day, uh, beginning of the day with prayer, as King David said, arise early in the morning and I go to his presence because I always put it in this way, as a soldier of Christ, you start the day receiving your marching instructions from the, from the master. Mm. and commander in chief mm. and that's what military life is about yes. so the priest is the person of prayer the priest is also the person of the sacraments uh -huh. because if you think about the anglo catholic tradition where the sacraments is very top and set for forefront quite unlike the evangelical tradition i am an evangelical but i'm sorry to say that we do not celebrate the sacrament as much as we should in our evangelical tradition yeah and i thank god for the uh, anglo catholic brothers and sisters who keep us in check in that sense. Mm. We need to recognize that the death and resurrection of Christ is the center point of the Christian message. And Jesus said, today I show you a new thing. Yes. This bread is my body. This cup is my blood. Do this as often as you can do it in remembrance of me. Yes. And I believe very strongly, as the Church of England teaches, that we should celebrate the Eucharist every day and every Sunday. Yes. If we have the means and ability to do that. Yes. I believe it very strongly. Yes. Because it's a very important part of our fellowship. So the priest is a person of the Eucharist, the person of the sacraments, mm. who does not only celebrate the sacraments, but enables people to participate in these feasts in this invitation That's right. to the table of the Lord, a foretaste of the wedding supper of the Lamb, mm -hmm. where we we'll all be gathered together, celebrating the love of God for us in Christ in heaven, in the new Jerusalem. Yes. And we've got to start doing it now, practicing it now. It is also a place of healing, a place of reconciliation, mm -hmm. a place of fulfillment, the Eucharist, the sacraments. So the priest is a person who studies after God. Mm. The priest is a person of prayer mm. who is dug into God, mm. who is ignoring everything else, all the distractions and focusing on God 24 seven, mm. developing an attitude of prayer. Mm. You know, there's something we call practicing the presence of God, yes. where we walk around with the presence of God, with us in his presence and he in our hearts. Because our world is so full of distractions. Mm. So you don't have to shut your eyes and go on your knees to be in prayer. No, it's a thing of our hearts, the heart relationship. And the priest is somebody who celebrates the importance of the sacrament, the Eucharist, in the life of the body of Christ. Third, fourthly, the priest is somebody 
who proclaims the message of the love of God to yes. the community they serve. Yes. Yes. And in proclaiming that message, we do it through teaching, mm -hmm. through preaching, mm -hmm. through Bible study, mm -hmm. through proclamation, and through every means possible, using every form of megaphone that we can find. Mm -hmm. And like St. Francis of Assisi said, and it, sometimes we do it without words. Yes. Through our love for those we serve. Yes. And in proclaiming the gospel, we bring some to faith. Uh -huh. And therefore, they need nurture and baptism. So the priest does not only proclaim the gospel or proclaim the love of God, but they bring the faithful to baptism. Mm. They bring the converted to baptism yes. in Christ and nurture them in discipleship yes. and bring them up in the things that they themselves have been taught. As Jesus said in Matthew 28, mm. go into the world and make disciples yes. of all tribes. Yes. Baptizing them in the name of the Father. And if they believe, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to observe the things that I have taught you. Yeah. So it's not just about the baptism, but it's about the nurture. It's about the discipleship. It's about bringing them up in faith. It's about traveling along the road with them. Mm. Gosh, um, Bishop, thank you so much for all that you shared. And I, I, I was actually making notes as you were talking. Um, and I loved what you said about a priest is a person who is after God's own heart, a person of prayer, a person of the sacraments, but also a person an individual who proclaims the, 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 the good news of Christ. And I remember I've been reading um, the Archbishop Stephen Cottrell's book called On Priesthood. And he talks about how, um, you know, uh, a priest is one who's also a messenger. And I made some notes and I loved what he said in his book. He said, um, the vocation to priesthood is to present Christ. You're called to be the one who embodies the message of the gospel. And in a culture that knows so little of the gospel tradition and its hope for the world, the church needs to learn to speak about its faith. And priests have a leading role in doing this and enabling others to share their faith in Christ and to share the gospel, the good news of Christ. So thank you so much for what you've shared. That, that kind of leads me to um, my second question. Uh, which I think is another big one. The, the question is, from your own um, experiences and perspective, what would you say are some of the joys and challenges of priestly ministry? Well, I mean, the, the joy to list, to sit down and list the joys of, and thank you for that very exciting question, because my sister, Vanessa, to think about the, list, the joys of the priesthood, the list is unending. Mm. The list is unending, honestly, because we live, in such a cynical world, mm. a world that is so di distracted from God and so negative. Yeah. And we tend to focus mainly on the negatives. Yeah. Meanwhile, there are so many wonderful things. For example, it is a joy and a delight to be called to serve the almighty God mm. and to serve his people. If I, I consider myself, people say to me, oh, you gave up your medical practice, you gave up your life of comfort and all that in order to become a poor priest. And I said, no, stop it. You got it all completely wrong. Yes. I didn't give up anything. He gave up everything for me. Mm. And I feel really privileged. I feel absolutely privileged to be called to serve the almighty God, mm. the creator of the universe. Who am I? Who am I to be called? Who am? Who am I? How do I qualify for that? Role? It's only by His grace. So it's for me. It's a real honor and privilege. And if you try to unpack that, wow! Where do I start from? <laughs> yes. Where do I want to start from? I mean, the joy, and the satisfaction, the fulfillment, and the peace of knowing that God is doing something to make a difference in somebody's life through you. It's just so unbelievable. Yeah. And I tell you, and when, you, when you're in that place, man, a million dollars will not, com will not compare. That's right. That's right. And so the joys are unending. I cannot, I cannot start to list them. But having said that, there are challenges, of course, especially in the Western world today. We live in the Western society where God 
is being squeezed out of the picture where the church is being pushed out of the picture. Yes. And like the Archbishop said, we have to take a stand as Christians, irrespective of the challenge we face. Mm. Because, you know, Jesus hasn't promised us an easy ride. Yes. Jesus said very clearly to his disciples, he said to them, in the world, you will have tribulations. Mm -hmm. He said, but be of good cheer, because I have been, tri I've been through tribulations myself, but I will never leave you nor forsake you. And you know, those 12 disciples, majority of them had their heads chopped off mm -hmm. in their lifetime. But they did not stop at proclaiming. Mm -hmm. Today, we have it so easy. Mm -hmm. We have it so simple, yet we are complaining. Yes. God give us grace. Mm -hmm. So I do not consider the challenges anything to worry about. In fact, I do not major on the challenges because what, what, what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and suffer the loss of his own soul? I don't want to be anybody's friend. I want to be God's friend. I don't want to be popular in anybody's book. I don't want to be a celebrity with 3 million followers and mm. go to hell. Mm. I want to tag, follow the line of Jesus, the narrow way. Yes. I don't mind being chastised. I don't mind being called names. I don't mind being persecuted. That's part of the game. Mm. But faithful is he who has called you my sister. Faithful is he who has called you my brother. He will keep his promise to you until the end. I mean, First Thessalonians 5, 24 says, he is faithful who has called you mm -hmm. and he will do it. He will do it. He's not, he's not, he's not lazy. He's not short of, of ability. He will do it. Yes. So when I think of the challenges, they're nothing compared to the blessings and the pleasures of being. I mean, I can list a hundred things for you today, but my sister, time will not permit us to do that. Mm. I feel, as I said, extremely privileged and extremely honored yeah. to be called to be a minister in this generation yeah. and to be a blessing, just to be a little blessing to one person. Mm. That's enough for my, to make my day. And the rest of it is history, as we say. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much, Bishop. Um, and I loved what you said about actually, you know, God is faithful through it all. Um, so thank you for that. That leads me to my final question, which is, um, do you have any words of wisdom? I, I mean, I know you're very wise, but any words of encouragement or wisdom for um, people like myself or other individuals who are currently exploring whether God is calling them to priesthood? Thank you so much for that lovely question, Vanessa. First and foremost, I want to thank you because when I meet a young, gifted, motivated woman or man like yourself, I feel very encouraged for the, for the future of the church. The first thing to say is um, we have just been celebrating Easter. We are people of the Easter faith. Yes. We know that God brings life out of death because Jesus rose from the dead after crucifixion. After Good Friday was Easter Sunday and Easter Monday. So my first advice to anybody who is exploring vocation is first and foremost to get serious with God. Be a person of prayer. Because it is in prayer that we find ourselves through finding a friendship with him. Yes. It's like looking at yourself in the mirror. Because the closer you come to his glory, the more of a reflection of yourself you will see mm -hmm. in what and what God is calling you to. So number one, be a person of prayer. Mm. Number two, be patient. Mm. Rome was not built in a day. Yes. You know, we, we live in a very fast, a fast world, fast track, everything. We want, we want uh, dinner, we just pick up um, the phone and call, just eat. And in 15 minutes, dinner is on our table. We want something, we just pick up the phone and we go to Amazon mm. and we get it delivered yesterday, not even today. Mm. We want everything on the fast track. You know, Jesus was walking up and down the face of this earth mm. for 30 years. 
30 years, three decades, just think about it. The God who created this world was walking up and down this earth for 30 years. You know why? Because if you are not up to 30 years old in Hebrew culture, you cannot speak, stand up to speak publicly. So God conformed into human culture in order to reach humans. Yes. If Jesus had started his ministry at 25, nobody would have listened to him. He had to be of age mm. in Jewish culture. Can you just imagine that? Mm. Can you imagine the patience, mm. the exercise? Can you imagine the calmness with which he did it? And the pains taken away. It was just think about it. And today for us, for some of us, three months is a long time. Mm. And people start complaining. No, prayer, be prayerful, be patient. And then be gracious. Because God is gracious. That's right. The exploration process is not an exam. It's not a pass or fail thing. I say to all my candidates, I say to them, don't go to that place thinking, oh, if I get through, then I've passed. If I don't get through, then I've failed. I hate the church. No, stop it. Mm. Don't ever think that way. We are members of the body of Christ, the family of God. Mm. If God wants me to go through, he would use them to help me to get to that place. Yes. Perhaps God has other plans for me. If he says not now, it could be later. Yeah. And the fact that it doesn't happen now doesn't mean it can't happen later. That's right. That's why there's opportunity for you to go back to the conference, the uh, advisory panel, yes. maybe after three years. But the bottom line is be prayerful, be patient, be gracious. Mm-hmm. And thirdly, I mean, fourthly, be confident in who God has made you. You don't need the approval or disapproval of the church to be who you are in Christ. Mm. Because as I said, we all believe in the universal priesthood of all believers. Yes. Because you are a priest to start with. Because God is going to use you in your context to do the work of a priest in your family, in your home, in your friendship group, mm. in your social group. As a Christian, born again, full of this, filled with the spirit of God. God is constantly using all of us but within that group, some are called to be ordained. Mm. So if you, have, if you don't get ordained, it doesn't mean you are not a priest. You are not doing the work of a priest. Yeah. I mean, you are a church, evan- church army evangelist. I am not more special than yourself. Because the context in which God will send you is going to be different from the context in which he will send me. Mm. And we're all workers in his vineyard. Yeah. So I beg my brothers and sisters, it is not a commercial post that you're seeking. It is not a career prospect you're looking at. It is a calling, a ministry to the gospel of, the, of, of Christ. That's right. So don't apply secular methods to it. That's right. Be gracious. Be confident in who God has made you. And fifthly, remember who you are in mm-hmm. Christ. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Be prayerful. Be gracious. And be confident and remember who you are. Be prayerful, be patient. Be prayerful, be patient, be gracious. Remember who you are in Christ. Mm. Sorry, uh, be confident in Christ and and remember who you are in Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, Bishop. Lots of wonderful, rich insights that you've provided um, to this conversation this morning. And I mean, I've personally, I personally feel deeply inspired and encouraged by all the words that you've shared. But I also know that um, for people that will be watching this later on, I know that they will definitely be encouraged as well. So thank you so, so much. Um, If you're watching this or you will be watching this later um, and you've got any more questions or any more challenges, do feel free to get in touch with me. My um, contact details will be in the YouTube description box uh, below. So that's that's for now. And until next time, thank you so much, Bishop. Bye. Bye.